once around the pistol star very famous star indeed perhaps because it was believed to be one of the most massive and most luminous stars in the universe it was discovered by the hubble space telescope back in 1990 when it was examining material in and around the center of the galaxy and what was discovered was that despite the fact that this is quite hard to observe as we shall see there was a very powerful star there now it's also given the designation v for variable 4647 and sagittarii because it's in the constellation of sagittarius that's where that we see the center of the galaxy but so here's a star map of Sagittarius, which unfortunately always looks like a teapot to me rather than uh, an archer riding a horse. But uh, marked with the red circle, that is where we find the pistol star, just below the region uh, labelled uh, M8 and M20. Those are the Lagoon and Triffid Nebula um, in the uh, constellation of Sagittarius there. And if we zoom in a little bit closer... We have the teapot again, and then you can see where the pistol star is, deep in the star and dust clouds of Sagittarius in that central region of the galaxy. Very, very hard to see indeed. With visible light, if they wasn't for all of the dirt and dust that's obscuring it, we would see it perhaps as a magnitude four star. So a moderately faint one, but nevertheless visible. But with all of that intervening dust and gas, you can't see it at all unless you have an infrared telescope. So that central region of the galaxy is an amazingly active zone. There's a lot going on. There's obviously Sagittarius A star, the central black hole of the Milky Way, four million times the solar uh, mass in there, and about 25,000 light years from us. Now, just to the left of the center, there is a very bright region that you can see in the image. That's the quintuplet cluster. Um, and it's buried in all of that gas and dust. But if we use an infrared telescope, we've got the ability to cut through that. Infrared is not stopped by dust. The wavelength of the light is long enough that it's not scattered by the dust particles. And we can see the brightest star just below right of center there is the pistol star in this lovely star cluster uh, almost looks like a visible light image but this is an infrared image taken cutting through all of that dust and this cluster discovered back in 83 is only about 100 light years from Sagittarius A star the center of the Milky Way galaxy and it contains a lot of super bright stars there are a couple of other LBVs, luminous bright variables, which the pistol star is one of, several red supergiants, and numerous wolf rayet stars. Wolf rayet stars are the most powerful of all. They're absolutely immense mass and produce enormous amounts of energy. And by studying these giant stars, we can estimate the age of this cluster, the quintuplet cluster to be around 4 million years based on the evolutionary state of the stars uh, of those masses. They will have evolved and some of them will have already become into the giant phase where they have exhausted the hydrogen in their cores in just that short 4 million years. Here's another picture again of the same region, just picking out the stars and uh, in different wave bands there but uh, essentially showing the same thing. Now, if we have a look at the pistol star itself, it is difficult because of all that gas and dust. The image on the left there is an estimated impression of what it might look like were we able to see it up close and unobscured. Um, and the image on the right is the uh, true picture with all of the intervening material blocking our line of sight. But it does make it hard to estimate the true mass of this object. And the most widely accepted mass is 125 times the mass of the sun. But it ranges from 27.5 to 250. 
250 was the early estimates, just based on the brightness. But more recent attempts to model the evolutionary stages of the stars in this cluster have got uh, down to this much lower figure of 27.5, although the consensus seems to be round about that 100, 125 mark for the mass. And again, that affects the estimate of how big it is. We think 420 times the radius of the sun, so an absolute monster. But estimates do range to uh, lower figures than that as well. What we can do more easily is measure the surface temperature, and that's 12,000 Kelvin, so it's hot and would be glowing blue and classed as a luminous blue variable. Um, the true power output's a little bit more difficult to estimate. This time there's only a factor of two in it between 1.6 and 3.3 million times as bright as the sun. And actually one of the ways you can check of the consistency of these measurements and estimates is using the Stefan Boltzmann law, which relates temperature raised to the power four to the uh, actual power output. And so what we can do here is plug in the numbers. If we take the temperature of the sun as 5772 as our baseline and divide it by 12,000 for the surface temperature of the pistol star, raise that to the power four, multiply it by the ratio of the power output, 3, uh, sorry, 3,300,000 times as bright, and then you take the square root of that, then that gives you an estimate of the radius um, in terms of comparison to the radius of the sun, which is 420, which is where all those numbers kind of fit together. So uh, if you change one, you really have to change all the other estimates as well. Now, one of the features of these very massive, powerful stars is that they produce a very intense solar wind. It's actually 10 billion times more powerful than that of our sun. And that enormous outflow of material and radiation and energy has a massive effect on the surrounding nebula material in and around the uh, quintuplet cluster. A few thousand years ago, probably something between four and 6,000 years ago, the pistol star underwent an enormous outburst and it threw out about 10 times the mass of the sun in a huge ejection, uh, which has created in this black and white image, the pistol star is the thing buried in the center of this outflow, roughly spherical around the star there that you can see of material that was being hurled away from the central star. And so for this reason, actually, the pistol star probably started its life as a much more massive object and is gradually throwing off these huge ejections of material. We think it's about 4 million years old, based on the estimates, and likely to last something between 1 million and 3 million years more. So it's not going to come to the end of its life tomorrow probably. And when it does so, that will cause an absolutely enormous explosion, what we would call a hypernova in the modern uh, way of talking about these things. A hypernova being a supernova, but a hundred times more powerful. And the way that this would work is that the star would implode on itself directly to form a black hole. Once its core dies and is not able to release any more nuclear energy, the force of gravity will just crush the core down way past any attempt for uh, the formation of the other stages of white dwarfs or neutron stars or even a quark star straight the way down to a black hole. And uh, this would be a very violent event indeed, and it would create a gamma ray burst, uh, uh, jets of gamma rays emerging along the polar axis in a long duration gamma ray burst. Um, so it'd be very, very spectacular, but 
25,000 light years away, I uh, don't think it will do the Earth any harm at all. And I don't think the gamma ray uh, jets are likely to be pointing in our direction anyway. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that little tour of the Pistol Star, one of the brightest and most powerful stars in the Milky Way galaxy, if not in the rest of the universe. So thanks very much for listening, and I'll be back with more tales of stars and astronomical objects as we go along.